It's a notoriously difficult question to answer. The Trinity of God is one of his more mysterious attributes. Attempts to create analogies to explain it have proven to be, at best, misleading, and at worst, heretical. With that being the case, then what exactly is the Trinity? There have been many analogies created in an effort to try to better understand the Trinity. One popular one is the analogy of the egg. This analogy suggests that the Trinity is like an egg in the sense that an egg is made up of three parts, the shell, the white, and the yolk. This analogy turns out to be misleading though, because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not three parts of God. Each member of the Trinity is himself fully God. Another popular analogy is the water analogy. It suggests that as water can exist as a liquid, solid, or gas, so too does God have three forms or modes that he can exist as. Unfortunately, that is actually a heresy known as modalism. Modalism is heresy because even though it affirms that there is only one God, it denies that he exists as three persons and instead teaches that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three modes that God can shift between as he sees fit. Perhaps the reason we have created so many analogies in an effort to try to better understand the Trinity is because the way we process new or unfamiliar information is by comparing it to something we're familiar with. Yet all these analogies come up short. God is infinite and holy, above and beyond his creation. There are some things about him that nothing in all of creation can compare to. The Trinity is one of those things. So then, how are we to understand it? Even if we can't fully grasp the concept of the Trinity with our finite minds, the way we are to understand it is by how God has revealed it to us in his word. The Bible is very clear that there is only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is also made evident in places such as 1 Corinthians 8.4, Galatians 3.20, and 1 Timothy 2.5. From there and other places, it is clear that there is only one God. There is no other like Him. The Bible also makes it clear that our one God exists as three persons. This is hinted at in Genesis 1 when God is about to create man and he refers to himself as us. We continue to see the distinction of each member of the Trinity and the work of creation. For example, we can see in 1 Corinthians 8, 6 that the Father is the one from whom all things exist. He created everything that exists through the Son, Jesus. This can be seen clearly in John 1, 3. We can also see from Job 33.4 that by the Holy Spirit, God has made us and gives us life. We also see the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the waters during the creation of the universe. God's word also shows us the distinct roles that each member of the Trinity has in our salvation. For example, it is the Father who elects who he will save. We see this made clear in Ephesians 1, when speaking of the Father, it says that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And then in verse 5, where it says, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. This is what makes salvation entirely a gift from God, and not at all anything we could ever accomplish. For those who are born again were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It is also the Father who draws us to himself, otherwise no one would be able to come to the Son for salvation. The Father is the one who sent his only begotten Son, Jesus. When the Son was sent into the world, he assumed human nature without losing any of his divine nature. Therefore, Jesus, the Son of God, is God incarnate. At the Son's baptism, the Holy Spirit descended on him as the Father gave the Holy Spirit to him without measure. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Son lived the perfect, righteous, and sinless life that we all fail to. 
Then, in perfect obedience to the Father, the Son went to the cross and willingly took the punishment that we deserve for our sin. The Father laid on his own Son the iniquity of us all and crushed the Son in our place. The Son laid down his life and then took it up again three days later when he rose from the dead in victory over sin, death, and Satan. In fact, all three members of the Trinity resurrected Jesus from the dead. The Son then ascended back into heaven to the right hand of the Father, and then both the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to indwell believers. The Holy Spirit regenerates a person, making them entirely new. The Holy Spirit applies the finished work of the Son to believers so that His perfect righteous life sacrificial death on the cross and resurrection from the dead counts for us who repent of our sin and put our faith in the only begotten Son of God. Therefore, let us put aside inadequate analogies and just believe what God's Word tells us. Even if we don't always understand it, God is always trustworthy. So because of who He is and what He has done for us, let us love, praise, and worship our amazing triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.